Hey you guys, this is Raphael Edge from ShilohRelics.com in Savannah, Tennessee. Coming to you today, we're going to talk about a really cool sword that I've always loved. And I love that I get to share these things with you. I hadn't talked about a sword in a little while, so this one came in the other day. And I thought, that's a perfect sword to get to talk about. Um, it's a naval officer sword from the Civil War. It's officially known as the Model 1852 a uh, naval officer's sword. And like a lot of them, like the staff officers and the foot officers, they're the, those are the model 1850s. They were the ones that they used during the Civil War. And uh, just because the model was in 1852 didn't mean all of them were made in 1852. They actually made this pattern of sword up until World War II and a little bit after. <clears throat> But this one is the early one. There's a couple things you look for on them. You want to see a nice wide blade. And the, because uh, later on they realized that these swords would have been, uh, during World War I, World War II, the swords were decorative. They weren't for fighting because you weren't fighting up close and personal like you were back during uh, the earlier days. So they thinned that blade down. They used basically the same guard, same grip, same everything, but they made that blade skinnier because it was just for dress. It was for uh, putting on and going around and showing everybody, I'm an officer. Look at me. I'm pretty. Uh, <laughs> and they, it worked because the swords were beautiful. They're absolutely beautiful. And they've got a couple of things I wanted to talk about. Uh, on the guard, they have the Floral guard almost looks like a foot officer sword because it's not a huge guard, but in the guard, look at this, they have the USN for United States Navy. And what do they do? The Navy always like to have their stuff a little different. And what they did, they put on the quillion, which is the piece that comes off of the handguard going towards the blade, this piece here. Look at it. They make it like a sea serpent. How cool is that? And not only did they make that as a sea serpent, on the scabbard at the end, which is called the drag, they put this. They had another sea serpent there. So you had two sea serpents on your sword uh, at minimum. Sometimes they put them on the blade. They would do things otherwise. But it's a, just a pretty sword. It's actually a lot cooler than the army sword. Sorry, army. Y'all lost on this one. This one is the one that looks pretty. And up on top of the pommel cap, and the pommel cap, as you remember, is the part that holds all the sword together. It holds the grip and the guard onto the blade itself. Look at this. At the top, they put that beautiful Union Eagle. It's got the droop wings, uh, meaning the wings are pointed down. But it's a cool looking piece. I mean, these, it's stylish. <laughs> and you can say a lot about them, but they had one of the coolest looking stylish short swords during the war. Uh, a lot of times the mounts will be made like this, having the rope pattern with it. And this one was one that's actually made by the Ames Company in Chicopee, Massachusetts. If you've watched any of these videos at all, you probably heard me talk about Ames multiple times because Ames uh, Manufacturing Company, uh, in Chicopee, Massachusetts, was the largest sword maker in the 1800s. And they, and you, when you look at a sword like this, you can see why. They're beautiful. I love them. Uh, I buy every one I can get. I've got probably four or five right now just because I like them. And I don't, if you see something on my site, I guarantee you one of two things. Either I like it or it was cheap. And one of the two, uh, because that's the two things that I tend to go after. But this one I bought because I liked and uh, with an AIM sword, you'll have not only the etching on the blade that marks AIM's uh, manufacturing company, Chicopee, Massachusetts, but they stamped the back of the uh, scabbard throat. And the throat of the scabbard, uh, generally with an AIM's, you'll have a leather body on the scabbard and you'll have brass mounts. The, uh, you'll have the drag at the uh, pointed end You'll have the middle mount, and then you'll have the throat. And on the throat, uh, the back of it, it'll have this Ames marking, which is nice because you know that it is the correct scabbard for the sword. A lot of times, you'll have one that's missing the scabbard, and somebody will just stick something with it to have a scabbard of some kind. Uh, this one, not only uh, is it marked Ames, but this one has the uh, sailor's initials. 
and it has the initials on the scabbard, on the front of the scabbard throat, like this. And then it also has it on the guard itself. One thing that's neat about these swords, that guard is very detailed. As you can see, with the serpent up on top and the C, uh, USN in the guard, it's very ornate and they made it in multiple pieces. You can actually see when you look closely like this, you can see that line where they joined those multiple pieces together. One thing you look for on one that's reproduction, it's just a cast piece and the detail work won't be as clear, but this one you can see where they made multiple pieces, joined it together because Ames made one heck of a good sword. <laughs> that's why they were around for so long. But this one, as of the time of this video, is on ShilohRelics.com. You can see those others. I've got a couple that are without scabbard, uh, which everybody would like to have the scabbard with them. But if you don't, a lot of times it makes it more affordable. So if you want to say, I've got an original Civil War Naval Officer sword, you can have one without spending several thousand dollars. They're, and they're still every bit as real, every bit as cool. Uh, they just don't have that scabbard. So go on to ShilohRex.com, check them out, order them quick, because I want you to have a pretty sword. I can use the money. Uh, so go on there, check them out. I hope you guys are doing well. Man, I got some sad news this morning. Uh, Gordon Lightfoot died. And this is Gordon Lightfoot. If you've heard many songs, you know him, Carefree, Highway, uh, Sundown. Uh, you Better Take Care, and uh, Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald. Just a, an amazing songwriter. But it got me to thinking about uh, the influences that people have in their life. And I say that because I heard an interview one time with Jimmy Buffett. And uh, Jimmy Buffett's always been one of my favorites. I'm sure he's a lot of y'all's favorites too. But he said when he got started, he wanted to form his presentation after Gordon Lightfoot. And I mean, hell, <laughs> Buffett has been selling out shows since uh, Methuselah was in knee pants and he wanted to be like Gordon Lightfoot. And so who would have thought when Gordon Lightfoot wrote, started writing those songs and got his uh, uh, start up in Canada. He's, he's from Canada in case you didn't know. Matter of fact, he's my favorite import from Canada. Uh, I can't think of any of them that I like better. Uh, but uh, just just the Im importance of a person that uh, was just himself. He always seemed to be himself, and he impressed that onto people. And people wanted to, to imitate that and to be like that. And that Jimmy Buffett wanted to be like Gordon Lightfoot. I just think that's neat. I think it's cool how people that today you look at Jimmy Buffett and be like, man, I want to be like him and go barefoot and sing songs and play in the islands and fly planes. and uh, But it, it started because of Gordon Lightfoot. So you ne And the reason I say all that, I get a little long-winded sometimes, but the reason I say all that is because you never know who you're going to influence. You never know. It might not be anybody famous, but it might be somebody that's watching you and seeing you and seeing you do the right thing and be like, I want to be like him. So today, uh, Mr. Gordon, I never met you, but I hope you rest easy, sir. And I hope that you realize all the lives that you have, uh, have had an influence on. And we thank you for that. And if you're out there today, act right. Because you never know who's watching you. And you never know who might want to be like you someday. I love you guys. And I'll catch you next time. And I'm so thankful for everything I've got. And so I just want you to know that. I love y'all.